This is a revealing snapshot showcasing Western Australia's historic wheat varieties. The trial near Bolgart is a look back in time, enabling measurement of yield and genetic gains that wheat breeders have achieved over the past 50 years to see the many differences in development of plants and plant types compared to more recent varieties. So the Green Revolution of the 1960s introduced not only new rust resistance genes that breeders were able to utilise, but importantly, the semi-dwarf genes. The semi-dwarf genes reduce the plant heights to the, the shorter plants that we see today and improve the harvest index of the crops and meant that they put more energy into growing grain rather than biomass. Some of the differences we see between some of the older varieties and some of the newer varieties are propensity for lodging. There's uh, differences in plant maturity that have shifted over the years to shorter season to match the seasons we actually have in Western Australia. There's been a shift in disease resistance uh, in response to new diseases that have come into the farming system over the last 20 or 30 years, like yellow spot. The trial site features 48 varieties, starting from the late 60s to recent varieties of two to three years ago, such as Vixen, and includes bread wheat, clear field tolerant wheat, and Gamenya, favoured by Japan due to its superior quality and apparent stem rust resistance. It helped to inspire the introduction of the udon industry to WA. The trial is effectively putting 21st century data behind yield improvements made over almost half a century. As a wheat breeder, it's been really fascinating to walk through this trial and look at some of the older varieties that are great-great-grandparents, great-great-great-grandparents of the modern day varieties that we've released and continue to develop in the breeding program. It also underlines GIDC's long commitment to partnerships with wheat breeding companies to deliver growers greater productivity through genetic improvements for yield and other key traits such as disease resistance. So here we have three quite visually different varieties that represent wheat production from the last 60 years. Howbird, tall, ornless, brown chaff variety released in the late 1960s, one of the last true tall varieties. Next we have Tinkurran, one of the mainstays of the biscuit wheat production when WA had a strong soft wheat industry. And the last variety you'll recognise is Wild Catchem, shorter plant type, mainstay of wheat programs through the 2000s, broad adaptation and was able to handle whatever the season threw at it year in year out. At the 2023 GIDC Grains Research Update in Perth, the discussion moved to the more popular current wheat varieties and their specific traits that benefit growers. So some of the most popular varieties at the moment are Scepter and Vixen, and they're popular because they offer a value package to growers that not only includes high yield, but also a physical grain quality package, disease resistance package, and a grade that they can deliver into that offers good value for the end of the season. Dion says GIDC's commitment and investment in pre-breeding work and in the genetic space informs the creation of new varieties by breeding companies. So GIDC invests into pre-breeding, which helps breeders improve their understanding of traits, their access to those genetics, and then it's our job to package those up in a variety and deliver it to farmers' paddocks. The long-term outcomes of the trial will help inform future breeding work to deliver more profitability for growers, with this trial showing a 0.6% yield gain per year over the last 20 years as a result of wheat breeding. But using other comparable data sets like NVT, we know that the rate's probably closer to 0.8 or 0.9% over the long run. So we'll use the results from this trial work to give us a benchmark of where the breeding industry's come from and where we're heading and in the future be able to check in and see that we're still on the right trajectory in delivering value for growers.